Okay, so this one might get me a little trouble. <laughs> I know I've I've done some questionable ones so far, but this 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 is the first one where I might I might get I might I might get a little I might get in trouble. <laughs> I might get a little trouble, Jeff. We have best mystical magical minority. <laughs> a lot of nominees this year. A lot of nominees this year, chat. All mystical, all magical, all minorities, chat. Black, Hispanic, Asian, you name it. Combination of all of them, you name it. <laughs> And the winner is Jimon Hunsu for Shazam Theory of the Gods. He gave his powers to that little white boy and then he died in the first movie, but then he came back for, for whatever reason. He got captured by Helen Mirren. And then they had to rescue him, chat. And he gave, he made sure to give those little white kids good advice on how to be a good mystical magical hero. And by God, they listened to him, chat. Listen to me, Billy. The fate of the world depends on it. One thing you absolutely must not allow the daughters of Atlas to do is anything. And they accepted him in, in, in their house. And he became a good friend of the family. And he got a haircut at the end, too. He looked fucking good. He looked real good, chat. So congratulations to Jimon Hunsu in his, for his first term. I imagine this, this will not be the last time he's nominated. I feel like he'll be nominated many, many times over. <laughs> Ah, there we are, my friends. There we are, my friends. The first annual Hermes. Let's play some of that music. Let's have a proper intro. The first annual slash inaugural Hermes. Celebrate, cel celebrating <laughs> cinematic Herman excellence. Like in the orchestra chat. Look at that, look at all those Hermes on screen chat. You got, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> And you have me fully encased in gold and mayo. The Hermes statue chat, the most coveted of, of, of film cinematic excellence awards created by one edgy berserker. Many people could take home a Hermes tonight chat, but not everyone. Not everyone can take, take home a Hermes. And um, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna just gonna get right into it, Chad, all right? I'm gonna tell you right now. Um, I put together uh, a, a bunch of categories and I had you vote in those categories, Chad. And how I came up with those categories, it was, it was because of you guys. You guys gave me some fantastic ideas for Herman Cinematic Excellence. Um, and we, 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 we put together <laughs> Some interesting categories, fun categories, questionable, <laughs> possibly in really bad taste categories where if anyone else possibly did this, they, they would be canceled and they would be demonized and, and thrown off, off the internet chat. But hey, I think we're, we're, we're going we're gonna to give it the good old, good old first try for the first annual Hermes. I think, I think everything's going to be fine. <laughs> I think everything's going to be okay. And these are in no particular order chat. Maybe I'll have a better sense of order in the future, but I kind of like it. You know what? It's the first time doing this. We'll, we'll live and learn, you know, and we'll make next year even better. But I think this year, this year is always going to be special, chat, because this is the first annual Hermie ceremony, chat, inaugural Hermes. And that is always going to live in our minds and more importantly, in our hearts, in our heart meet, chat. So let's go ahead and get to our, our first category here, chat. Best fight scenes. And the nominees are Chair Leg Up the Butt in The Killer, Keanu Reeves' War with Words in John Wick Chapter 4, Tom Cruise running at people and at things in Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. I heard that they, they got rid of the Part 1 chat. Now it's just Mission Impossible colon Dead Reckoning. The Ken War in Barbie and Godzilla's Jaws Impression for Godzilla minus one. And Chad, I vote in these categories. You guys vote in these categories too. Okay? So I, I believe it is, it is all uh, 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 ca categorized and, and all our information is collected in a fantastic way. And there is no manipulation of the polls at all. <laughs> and I am proud to say, I am proud to say the, the, the first person walking away, taking home a Hermie 
in the first annual inaugural Hermie Awards is Keanu Reeves. Keanu's War with Words for John Wick Chapter 4. Let's give it to Keanu Reeves, chap. Woo! He can barely speak. <laughs> he can barely talk, chap. He can barely talk. He can fight real well. He can kick a lot of ass. But the man can barely speak in complete sentences. Let's give it to Keanu Reeves' War with Words in John Wick Chapter 4. Absolute cinema. Cinema, chat. I'm going to need a gun. Now, now I know that first that first category was super fun, super exciting, chat. We got to move on to the second one. The second one of, of like 30 or 25. or I don't know how many categories I made. I forgot. You keep count for me. We got to move on to the next one, chat. So after best fight scene, we have best unintentionally funny scene. We have the destroyer of that puss in Oppenheimer. We have every exposition scene in Rebel Moon, Rebel Moon Part 1. Jason Moe was always there, apparently, in Fast Five. He was just high in the background. He was just kind of off to the left, off to the right. You just didn't see that giant Samoan man, Chad. Napoleon's horny mouth noises sound like a fish. And the dead CGI babies in the flash. And chap. Based on your votes, based on my votes, I'm proud to say that the winner of the, of the best unintentionally funny scene is the dead CGI Flash Babies. Let's, let's give it to them. Yay! Those dead-eyed sons of bitches. They were dead before they even went out the window, Chet. They were dead before they even saw Ezra Miller. They just, they never had a chance. But those dead CG, when we saw them, we went, oh my God. Hideous. Terrifying. But they, they, they went home. They went home with the best unintentionally funny scene of the year. And they had, they had stiff competition. It was me, Barry. It was me. <laughs> Taking home the award for the dead-eyed CGI babies because they are indeed dead, chat. They were dead before they went out the window. Is 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 the reverse flash. Is Professor Zoom. Eobald Thon. Thank you so much, sir, for accepting for the dead CGI babies who are indeed dead. And chat, we got we gotta move on to the next category. After that, we have this is a this is a bit of a serious one. Now we've been pretty goofy talking about best fight scene and an unintentionally funny scene. But this is this is one I feel like the Oscars should include. I'm very glad we were ahead of the curve. We're ahead of the Academy Awards right now. And we have best voice actor. Best male voice actor chat. The nominees are Robert Pattinson, The Boy and the Heron, Bradley Cooper for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, Shamik Moore for Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse or the Universe as I wrote it out. <laughs> We seem to have a technical uh, uh, difficulty right there, but you know what I'm talking about. Jack Black from the Super Mario Bros. movie and Riza Med for Nimona. And let me go ahead and see who the, the, the award goes to. Oh, chat. And the winner and the winner of the best voice actor award goes to, based on everyone's voting chat, is Bradley Cooper. Bradley Cooper for voicing a CGI raccoon which technically was his best role last year because Maestro was terrible and he was laughable in that movie chat. Congratulations to Bradley Cooper for playing that sad raccoon. The name's Rocket. Rocket Raccoon. Fantastic. That's not, we're not, we're not done. We're not done with voice acting. We're not done. Far, far from it, chat. Far from it. Because we just talked about the dudes. What about those broads? What about those broad voice actors? We have the best voice actress, chat. We have Haley Steinfeld for Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse or Universe, depending on how you want to say it. We have Chloe Grace Moretz for Nimona. Lauren Vellas, for those that don't know, she played Miles Morales' mom in Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Ayo Edabiri for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Karen Fukuhara, yes, that is her last name, chat, for The Boy and the Heron. And the winner, based on everyone's votes, chat, we got to go with the majority, is Haley Steinfeld for Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Congratulations, Haley. 
You had Miles Morales lusting after you throughout the entire movie, and you denied him any sort of affection whatsoever. Congratulations on your win. In every other universe, Gwen Stacy falls for Spider-Man. And in every other universe, it doesn't end well. But we are far from over. Far from over, Chad. You guys voted in many other categories. I know. I, was, I thought, I, I'm right there with you, Cass. I thought Chloe Grace Moretz was going to take home from Nimona. I have to admit, I voted for her too. But people, much like Miles Morales, were lusting after Gwen Stacy. They were, they're, 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 they're lust compelled her, uh, 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 put her up on top over, over poor old Chloe Grace Moretz. But there you go, chap. Moving on from our voice actors, which I feel like should be a serious uh, uh, category and award at the Oscars, and one day it should be, one day it will be. We move on to best death scene in a movie. We have the brain scoopa scene from Saw X. We have a scalp and a haircut in Evil Dead Rise. Don't look down. Your tummy is falling out in Scream 6. The Cockroach Burger is the DCEU. And we have Rocket's Friends in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. And the winner chat for best death scene goes to Rocket's Friends. Rocket's Friends in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. You had, you had, you had uh, Floor. You had Teefs and Layla. They were little abominations, and Rocket learned what what the the, 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 the villain was going to do. And he's like, I got to free my friends, but then he murdered the friends. He shot them all, and Rocket was very sad. But congratulations to them. They can't accept the award because they're dead. But still, they did, they did a really good job. <laughs> Close, close second, Chad. Close second. Based on the information I'm seeing right now, close second was the cockroach burger. Is the DCEU that was that was the that almost won, but there were just a few. There were like a, a, I think two or three more votes for Rocket's friends from Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three, Chad. So thank you uh, to them and their sacrifice and 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 Rocket's emotional wail as he ripped off the high evolutionary's face. I did I did enjoy that quite a bit. But moving on. From best death scene, we go to best animal and or muty. All right? Like the Morlocks from X-Men chat. And, and the nominees are the entire cast from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutant Mayhem. Bradley Cooper again <laughs> for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Cocaine Bear from Cocaine Bear. The Tracker's Dog from John Wick Chapter 4. And Messy the Dog from Anatomy of a Fall, and the winner for Best Animal and Muty, maybe even a combination of both, Chad, is Bradley Cooper. Bradley Cooper, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. He has picked up so many awards, Chad. You know, he almost, he was so excited for playing Leonard Bernstein. I think that was going to carry him. You know, this is going to be, this going to be my big year, but it was like, no, no one likes that movie, Bradley. We, we, we like it when you're a CGI raccoon. You should have led with that. Garns is just sweeping. <laughs> it's doing very well. I'm very impressed. I'm very impressed with Garns. I think James Gunn's very happy. He's going to be very happy with the Hermes chat. Uh, the Garns didn't get a lot, of, a lot of love at the Oscars this year, but the Hermes? Mm. <laughs> pretty good. Pretty good. Oh, my God. Garns sweeping. <laughs> you, keep, you guys keeping track of the winners? Keep track of the winners for me. Who's won what? Because <laughs> I didn't. I'm not keeping track. All right. Moving on from Best Animal Muty, which technically Rocket was an animal and a Muty. He was both, chat. Nice. Good for him. We get to Best Worst Wig and Makeup, what I call the Tyler Perry Award, chat. And the nominees are Bradley Cooper, not for Rocket Raccoon, but for Maestro. John Boyega for They Clone Tyrone, his old man makeup. Amber Heard's hair for Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. And Michael Keaton's hair and beard in the flash. And based on your on your votes, Chet, the winner is Michael Keaton's hair 
and Beard in the Flash. It looks so fake when he was trying to fight the berries in his kitchen because it w wasn't really Michael Keaton at all. It was just a stunt double wearing a really bad wig that they then put on Michael Keaton's head. It was terrible, Chad. But it's a winner. The Flash has picked up two awards. That's not too bad, Chad. Two, those dead-eyed, those dead CGI babies and Michael Keaton's toupee wig and facial hair is doing pretty well so far. Not bad, not bad. Flash and Guardians are sweeping these awards. Excellent. Well, moving on, we get to Best Worst Poster. And for our worst poster, Chad, we had My Big Fat Greek Wedding 3. Saltburn, The Flash, Killers of the Flower Moon, and Expendables. And the winner is, according to your votes, chat, Expendables, also known as Expendables 4. It's just everyone's names listed out. It looks really bad. Everyone that you would have wanted to be in that movie's not even there anymore. Stallone died in the film, but then they brought him back in the end because he originally was supposed to be in the movie. But he's on the poster, chat. Expendables, congratulations on your shitty poster. But in a way, all these people that were nominated had shitty posters, and they also were great in being the worst. And moving on from best worst poster, we get to best product placement. Only a few nominees here, only three nominees here. I want to get some more nominees for next year. But for this one, we have Skittles for Shazam, Fury of the Gods, Burger King and the Haunted Mansion, and Ant-Man 3, Baskin Robbins, a very competitive category. This came down, it actually came down to uh, like two people, I believe. It was only like a two-vote difference. But the winner is, chap, based on your votes, Ant-Man 3, The Wasp and the Quantumania, and Baskin Robbins. They always know. They find out eventually, chap. Why are you dressed like that? Because I work at Baskin Robbins. This is my uniform. These are normal clothes. Why are you dressed like that? Baskin Robbins, congratulations on your first annual inaugural Hermie. Absolutely incredible. So good. And moving on, chat, to best worst case of nepotism. Only two nominees this year. Only two nominees. Although I think we'll see one of these nominees quite often in the future. <laughs> we have, for best worst case of nepotism, John David Washington for the creator and Michael Douglas for Ant-Man 3 and the Wasp and the Quantumania chat. And the winner is by a mile. <laughs> I should have even included the other person, honestly. <laughs> but the person who won this award, chat, by a mile, by a huge stretch, is John David Washington. You, you, you are the son of one of the greatest living actors today, but you have none of his talent. You're like a charisma vacuum. When you walk into the room, Everyone else just starts looking even worse because of you, John David Washington. Why are you being put in movies? I don't understand it, but John David Washington is our winner, and I expect it. I expect he will be featured in this category for many years to come. <laughs> many, many years to come. But congratulations to good old Johnny D. Washington. How? So good, so good, or so bad in his case. But moving on, moving on from best worst case is nepotism, chap. We have Best Worst Accent, which I called the Tom Hardy Award. He does all sorts of funny little voices nowadays, chat. I remember when you used to like him. I used to like him, and now I don't. But our nominees are Brandon Frazier for Killers of the Flower Moon, Russell Crowe for The Pope's Exorcist, Charlie Hunnam for Rebel Moon Part 1, Chris Pratt, the Super Mario Bros. movie, the cast of Ferrari for Ferrari, or Keanu Reeves' human voice, for John Wick Chapter 4. <laughs> and, based on, and based on your votes, Chad, the winner is Keanu Reeves and his human AI voice for John Wick Chapter 4. He can barely speak in complete sentences, Chad. How close can you get me to the church? Everything he says sounds like a question, even though it's not. it shouldn't be a question. It should just be a declarative statement. What's wrong with him? He's gotten worse since this franchise has gone along, chat. I don't get it. 
But he has taken home two awards. John Wick Chapter 4, chap, has taken home two awards so far for the first annual inaugural Hermes. And I'm I'm very I Keanu, can you say can you say it for us? I need a gun? I don't I guess he needs a gun or he he doesn't he's not sure if he needs a chap, but I don't know. He he won it. All we know is he's taken home two awards for his very strange voice and his inability to speak in complete sentences. So congratulations to Mr. Reeves. I'm sure he'll be featured in, in many future Hermes to come. Many future Hermes to come. But moving on for Best Works Accent, the Tom Hardy Award, which again, Tom Hardy might be featured in this category one day. I, I can't wait for that day. Maybe he'll take home his own award, which he's named after. Of. <laughs> we move on. Speaking of speaking, we move on to Best Monologue. And our nominees are Robert Downey Jr., his Strauss breakdown from Oppenheimer, Jackie Chan, I'm Your Dad, and Humans Suck in TMNT, Mutant Mayhem, Michael Fassbender's internal monologue in The Killer, uh, Chiwudi Awuji, How Did You Do It, when he's assaulting Rocket Raccoon in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, and, a and Abby Ryder Forston, talking to God, are you there, God? And are you there, God? It's me, Margaret. And let's see here, chat. I, I, I went ahead and I looked at all your votes. And this one, this one was, this one kind of ran away with it. This one, ran, I thought there would be some, uh, there'd be some closeness with this particular one. But nope, this person won it by a mile. And huge congratulations to Robert Downey Jr. Or as we like to call him here, Robert Downey Jr. For your straws breakdown for Oppenheimer. They don't want me in the cabinet room. Maybe they should just invite Oppenheimer instead. My favorite moment of the movie, and I think for a lot of people, their favorite moment as well. They should be thanking me. It's like, no, Robert, no. We're thanking you for losing your mind in that scene, for playing such a narcissistic maniac. <laughs> so thank you so much, good sir. And, and, and a fine category to be nominated in, one of the more positive ones. <laughs> Hey, all right, we go from, a, 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 I think, a serious category, chat, showcasing one's acting ability, showcasing great writing, in my opinion, and we go to one of my favorite categories, though probably not as serious as Best Monologue, we go to Best Derp Moment, chat. You guys know I love a good derp. I even have a derp emote. And I'm, I'm very excited for this category. We had a great selection of nominees this year. Best Dirt Moment. And the nominees are Michael Fassbender misses the shot in The Killer after 30 minutes of him hyping himself up just to fuck it all up. So good. The Doctor Scam Jigsaw and Saw X. Not smart on their behalf. Emma Stone just popping and locking and dancing in Poor Things. Chris Pine Distraction. To try and distract those guards, but then he got a sudden case of the derp face in Dungeons and Dragons, Honor Among Thieves. And Napo again, Napoleon's not made again, chat. Napoleon makes sex sounds in Napoleon. <laughs> and let's see here, chat. This one, this one was super close. It was between two nom This was a two horse race, chat. But one, one did come out on top by one vote. And the winner is Emma Stone dancing. Losing her mind in poor things. Chris Pine looks like he had it for a long time. Chad does the dragons on among these. But then there was just two extra votes that came in and snatched her from him. Probably when he was being really derpy. But that's the winner, Chad. Emma Stone dancing. And that was a good derp moment. She was derpy for like three quarters of that film. Some would say all of it, but I'll say three quarters, and certainly when she was dancing around. No question. But congratulations to her. Congratulations to Poor Things. Poor Things first Hermie, chat. Look at that. History was made. The first derp. We'll, we'll, we'll think back, chat. We, we think back when 20 years of doing the Hermes. Hopefully this will look even better. <laughs> Hopefully it'll, we'll have moving parts and stuff. But we'll, we'll look back. We'll look back at the legacy of the Hermes through a nice compilation. And we'll have all these derpy scenes, but the first one we'll see will be Emma Stone losing her goddamn mind being a derp in Poor Things. Can't wait for that. Can't wait for that. But moving on from derp, we got to get to gross. Best gross moment, chat. We have Puke Girl from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. <laughs> we have any Barry Keegan scene <laughs> in Saltburn, in the movie Saltburn. 
Tentacle Sex, and Rebel Moon Part 1, Modoc Butt, and Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, Ant-Man 3, whatever you want to call it. And the eyeball scene, talk to me, also very gross, also very gross. This one again, Chad, this one won by a fucking mile, had the majority of the votes. This won't come at a surprise to anybody, Chad. And the winner is any Barry Keegan scene <laughs> in Saltburn. From licking up that cum in that bathtub to slurping up that period blood to him fucking a, a grave. And him just flopping around with his big old floppy dick at the end of the movie. He was gross. <laughs> he was really gross in that film, Jeff. And we love him for it. We're always going to love Barry Keegan for being the gross little gremlin that he is. The little troll that he is, Jeff. Hey. Oh, what a, what a moment. What a moment. What a, what a, what a legacy to live behind in, in, in not only film history... But Hermie history, Chad. <laughs> That's how I want you to think about film now. I want to think about cinematic history. I want you to think about film like it's Hermie history. <laughs> but hey, we're not done. We still got a lot more uh, uh, categories to cover, Chad. Moving on from best gross moment. This one's a little personal. You know, I don't know if you guys know about the uh, know know this about me, but I like talking about myself. And uh, we have to talk about the best spicy Herman rant. Or I guess best spicy Herman review, if you will. We've had a number of reviews from last year that I got pretty spicy on that I had uh, that I, I took issue with. And the nominees are you people, my you people review, Rebel Moon Part One, a Children of the Corn review, The Flash review, Five Nights at Freddy's review. And Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. As you guys know, I really disliked all these movies for a variety of reasons. Maybe I thought they were poorly written. Maybe I thought they were poorly directed. Maybe I thought the acting was bad. Maybe I, maybe I thought they were racist or rapey or just, uh, uh, just obnoxious. But there was only truly one. There was only truly one that was, the, according to you guys, the spiciest. And the winner is, based on your votes, Rebel Moon. Rebel Moon Part 1 Review. One of my biggest reviews of last year, chat. And I just had so much disdain for that film. It was a ripoff of numerous sci-fi fantasy properties. Featured the, the worst things about Zack Snyder's filmmaking. From his slow motion, his exposition, his focus on rape for whatever reason. And just just him his pretentiousness being on full display. It 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 it, it just captured my ire and was very, very spicy at the end of the day. It is pure slow-mo, desaturated spectacle with frequent scenes of gratuitous excretions of exposition and word vomit. But congratulations, Rebel Moon. I think that's like Rebel Moon's possibly its, its second win of the night. Could be Rebel Moon's second win of the night, Chad. Go ahead and check me on that. Could be its first or second, but Rebel Moon, not bad, not bad, I have to say. Moving on, moving on from uh, Spicy Herman Ramp. We're at best pretentious moment in Hermie history. We have the dream and vision scenes from Five Nights at Freddy's. I thought this was about killer animatronics. No, it's about dreams and visions. Every slow motion shot from Rebel Moon Part 1, the patriarchy kept me out scene, and the Exodus Believer or America Ferrera's soapbox speech in Barbie. Very interesting category chat. A lot of pretentiousness, I would say in all these scenes, but there can be only one. And according to all your votes, chat, the winner is Rebel Moon. Every slow motion shot in Rebel Moon. Why is every shot in this movie slow motion? I don't need to see oats and barley fall in slow motion. Like even in the slow motion, it gets even slower. And we have to come out of like several layers of slow motion. The film's like, stop it. Just, just don't do it. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> but that was the most pretentious scene, which is pretty much every scene in that movie chat. So uh, another, another win, possibly the third win for Rebel Moon. Part one, a children of fire of the corn uh, tonight. Incredible. And now we get, now we go back to some of the more serious awards chat. You know, we go back to the ones that people are like, oh, you know, what? this is, this is actually, this is interesting. Best, saddest moment. We have the Christmas party kitchen scene from The Holdovers, Nimona's flashback from Nimona, 
Rocket loses his friends. You know, they keep dying. Champion nominated several times over. In Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, I used to be a brother scene from the Iron Claw, and the Barbara Simon scene talks about her abuse. And are you there, God? It's me, Margaret. This was very close. It was really between two. It was between two, and they were going back and forth. And I, was, I, was, I had my eye on both of these. I'm like, I don't know which one's is going to be. I have no idea which one it's going to be. But there can be only one. And the winner is, I used to be a brother scene from the Iron Claw. Zac Efron got robbed. He should have been nominated for Best Actor. Iron Claw should have received numerous Oscar nominations, chap. And that scene at the end of the movie. You okay, Dad? Lee. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, boys. You shouldn't see me like this. Talking about his lack of brothers, and he wants to, you know, he, you know, he used to be a brother, and his children saying, we can be your brother, Dad, broke me. I cried during that scene. I got water eyed, Jack. And it was a beautiful, sad moment. Some other great nominees, though. I cried when Rocket lost his little abomination, friends. That was very sad. That came in second. But Zac Efron, he made me cry more compared to the deaths of CGI creatures. Congratulations, Iron Claw. I believe that's Iron Claw's first win for the Hermes. Fantastic, fantastic. But we're not done, Shay. We're not done yet. Movie. Okay, so this one might get me in a little trouble. <laughs> I know I've, I've done some questionable ones so far, but this, this, this is the first one where I might, I might get, I might, I might get a little, I might get in trouble. <laughs> I might get a little trouble, Shay. We have Best Mystical Magical Minority. <laughs> a lot of nominees this year. A lot of nominees this year, Chad. All mystical, all magical, all minorities, Chad. Black, Hispanic, Asian, you name it. Combination of all of them, you name it. <laughs> and the nominees are Jimon Hunsu for Shazam Fury of the Gods as a mystical bla uh, 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 black wizard. <laughs> The black voodoo lady from The Exorcist Believer. I didn't look up her name. She's the black voodoo lady. We know who she is. Sebastian from The Little Mermaid, chat. The Meeks twins from Scream 6. How did they survive that movie? I don't know. DJ from Meg 2. And technically a mystical magical creature, Lofty, from Wonka, chat. <laughs> and this one, I thought there would be a lot more competition, Chad, but this guy ran away with it. And the winner is Jimon Hunsu for Shazam Fury of the Gods. He gave his powers to that little white boy, and then he died in the first movie, but then he came back for, for whatever reason. He got captured by Helen Mirren, and then they had to rescue him, Chad. And he gave, he made sure to give those little white kids good advice on how to be a good mystical magical hero. And by God, they listened to him, chat. Listen to me, Billy. The fate of the world depends on it. One thing you absolutely must not allow the daughters of Atlas to do is anything. And they accepted him in, in, in their house. And he became a good friend of the family. And he got a haircut at the end, too. He looked fucking good. He looked real good, chat. So congratulations to Jimon Hunsu. In his, for his first term, I imagine this, this will not be the last time he's nominated. I feel like he'll be nominated many, many times over. <laughs> certainly in this category. Certainly in this category. And moving on, chap. Okay, if this category didn't get me canceled, this one might. This one, this one, like, mm, I don't know about this one. <laughs> but we have talked about it on stream before. It was work. It was work for him. He, he put in the hard work. I liked the movie, too. I thought it was fun. I like when he was just screaming at everybody. Screaming at a little, uh, that little kid. Oh, get the kid from Stranger Things. Hilarious. It, whatever the fuck movie he was from. All right, moving on. We have Best Blackrifice and Minority Sacrifice, chat. Only three big ones this year. We had three big ones. We have Ray Fisher for playing that guy who we were introduced to five minutes before he was killed in Rebel Moon Part 1. Damien Alcazar in Blue Beetle. He played, he played uh, 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 Blue Beetle's dad who had a heart attack. He was just too scared, but he was seeing. And then we have Yahya Abdul-Mateen II. In Aquaman the Lost Kingdom, he allowed himself to be possessed by a weird Scooby-Doo ghost. And then he too died because he wouldn't he didn't accept Jason Momoa's help at the end of the movie. And this one, again, this this person ran away with the chat. I don't think this will be the last time we'll see this person on this list either. Uh, it featured in this nominated in the Hermes. And the winner is chat for best blackrifice and/or minority sacrifice. The Hermie goes to Ray Fisher. 
for playing the, 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 the Blood Axe guy from Rebel Moon Part 1. He ran in slow motion. He attacked that ship thing. Yeed himself out at it and died. So then all those other characters could survive, chat. So we could get Rebel Moon Part 2, the PG cut, and then the radar cut, and then the black and white cut, and then the cut where both movies are combined. He sacrificed himself so we can get four different versions of the same stupid fucking movie, which will be out later this year. So congratulations, Ray Fisher. Thank you for your noble black rifice. We appreciate it. <laughs> I don't think this will be the last time he's nominated in this category, chat. I think we're going to see Ray Fisher here again. Very soon. Very, very soon. And moving on, chat. Only a couple more left. Only, only literally two left. We got two left. Oh, man. We don't have that many left, chat. Here we go. Moving on. We have Best Worst Savior. And the nominees are Jason Statham for Meg 2, Killian Murphy for Oppenheimer, Jim Caviezel for The Sound of Freedom, Michael Fassbender for Next Goal Wins, and Timothy Chalamet for Wonka. And the winner is for this one, Chad. This, this person all, all ran away with it. No question. No question at all. And the winner is Jesus Christ himself. Good old Jim Caviezel, Chad, for The Sound of Freedom. Yes, he's lost his mind. Yes, he thinks he's a messianic figure. But he made sure to do a biopic about a guy and the events that that guy participated in that maybe aren't really real or didn't actually happen. It doesn't matter. He saved all those little brown kids, or so they say, from pedophiles. So thank you, Jim Caviezel, for your very cringy role in The Sound of Freedom. White Jesus saved the day, chap. You're under arrest for crimes against children. <laughs> Thank God for white Jesus. Fantastic. Oh, Chad, hold on now. Hold on now. Hold on. I, I, I just, I, I, I've just been told that there was a category that we might, that we might have missed, that we might have missed, and I got to make sure to, to, to get it up there. Hold on. Hold on, my friends. Ah, uh, here it is. Here it is. I got it. I got it. We got it, chat. We got the next award. We got the next award. This is one of the most coveted awards of the year. Other than the best Herman picture, chat, I think this is possibly the best award that you can possibly get. And we have best lizard person. Stiff competition this year. There has been a lot of scaly, slimy, amphibious, reptilian actors and actresses that have have made a number of great films this year, chat, and gave great lizard-esque performances. And our nominees are Barry Keegan and the entire cast of Saltburn for Saltburn, Killian Murphy for Oppenheimer, Godzilla. For Godzilla minus one, Michael Fassbender, the killer, Paul Giamatti, the holdovers, and his eye. You got to give his eye credit, chat. And Tilda Swinton. Look at that. Uh, one movie. We got one movie, but two nominees in the same movie, chat. Tilda Swinton for the killer. This one was very close. This was honestly between two nominees, chat. Two nominees, and it came down to literally one vote. Came down to one vote. But the winner is, chat. Godzilla, Godzilla, the king of the monsters himself, has won his first Hermie Award for best lizard person. It also helps that he's a giant lizard, chat. I have to admit, though, Barry Keegan and the entire cast of Saltburn gave Godzilla a run for his money. They were literally one vote behind him, chat. But let's let's give it to Godzilla and, and the entire cast, anybody else, and Godzilla minus one. Hail to the fucking king, chat. Hail to the king. He did a great job. I was, I was pulling for him, but Barry Keegan and his cast of salamanders and amphibians, they were right behind him the whole time. <laughs> they had that. They had that. Oh, my Lord. Very stiff competition. I can't wait for next year, chat. 
You know, because Godzilla most likely will not. No, he'll be will be nominated, possibly nominated again. Yeah, we could see Godzilla nominated again for Godzilla. XCOM Wakanda Forever, the new Empire chat. So Godzilla could take it two two years in a row. That'd be pretty, that'd be pretty impressive. <laughs> and here we go, chat. The final award. And I'm gonna I don't I forget how many we have like 30 categories. I think we've had like 28 or 29 or 30 categories, chat. But so far, it's been a really fun Hermes. Really fun Hermes. But here we go. The best Herman picture, chat. So this list is comprised of movies that I love. This is, these are my top 10 favorite films of last year. And they excelled in being perfect Hermy movies. Uh, incorporating the things that Hermans like. And uh, these, these, these films nailed it. They nailed it at being Hermy. And the nominees are <laughs> The Holdovers, Godzilla Minus One, The Iron Claw, Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret. Talk to me, Dungeons and Dragons, Honor Among Thieves, Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 3, The Boy and the Heron, Nimona, and Spider-Man across that Spider-Verse or Universe, however you want to say it, chat. And this one, this one was close. Honestly, it was between four movies. These four movies got a lot of votes, but this one won by two. It won by two because you guys are so passionate about these Herman films, just as much as I was as a, as a Herman. But the winner was, Chad, the winner was, and I'm very happy to say this, Chad, because this is a movie that deserved even more attention at the Academy Awards, and we're giving the attention it fucking deserves here. And the winner is Godzilla Minus One, the king of the monsters, who just won Best Lizard Person, also gets to take home the first annual inaugural Best Herman Picture. Godzilla minus one. Congratulations on a two-time Hermie winner. Isn't that great? <laughs> I think that's really special. I think that's really special, Chad. We've had a lot of winners tonight. Those The dead CGI babies, their dead little eyes, they won. Bradley Cooper won like four times. <laughs> him, and his, him and his dead co-stars. Listen, there's a theme going on. If you died in one of these movies, and you were CGI, you're probably going to walk away with an award. It's <laughs> a theme here. And if you're a giant lizard person, you also have a, a big fucking shot. You got a good shot of, of, of women, of winning a, a Herman Award for cinematic Herman excellence. But there you go, Chad. That brings us, that brings us to the end of the, of the Hermes. I, I, we, it, this, this show will go through many changes, many evolutions, and de-evolutions for many years to come. And we can make it even better next year. Well, I want to hear from you guys. What did you like about the Hermes? What would you want changed? Let me know. But I hope you enjoyed this wonderful, produced Herman show. Classy. Very classy. <laughs> Good tree. Hello, Christopher. <laughs> All right, it's Good tree. Good to see you. Woo! I hope you're doing well. I hope you guys are doing well. But here we go. The, the first... Annual inaugural Hermes. <laughs> Next year, most ignore. We should do that. That should be a great. That would be a great category. I'm gonna write that down. Most ignored woman. <laughs> I'm gonna. That's yeah. That's what I need from you guys. I need. I need some additional uh, categories. Most ignored woman. Fantastic. There you go. I know, two-way race between Nye and Lisa. That'll be, that'll be for my chat. <laughs> Shame on you for trashing Keanu. He's practically Jesus. I, you know, he's a talented man. He just, he just can't speak sentences very well. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. So funny, it doesn't drag on the Oscars. Yeah, it was good. It was about, what, three minutes? Not enough quantum man. It got nominated. It was nominated, mister. It got, it, it got received several nominations. It received several nominations. I love the best worst poster category. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna next year. I'm gonna show you guys the posters. But if you guys, if you guys participate in the poll, you can see the posters. I honestly thought you guys were gonna go for the my big fat Greek wedding three. It looked awful. That's what I voted for. However, however, um, uh, Expendables was pretty bad. Like all those posters, I thought Saltburn was just like ugly looking. Saltburn was pretty ugly looking. Yeah, the Flower Moon poster was heinous. That was bad. Like all of them were bad. Like if any of those won, fine. I just thought maybe the the my big fat Greek wedding because they ne no, none of those people like looked real. They looked like they were wearing. They looked like lizard people wearing skin suits. They just looked swollen. It looked swollen and like they were just filled with tumors. I was like, what's going on there? 
He almost picked Greek Wedding. Yeah, there you go. No. No Javier Botan for Best Lizard. Oh, he would have... You know what? There's always a snub. Bat Boy, there's always a snub every year. The thing is, Lizard Person was a competitive category. Like, you know, originally I was just going to do five nominees. We had six nominees. We went over. We went over because I also like... Well, Tilda Swinton, she's kind of Lizard-like, you know? I feel like she's like crawling on her walls and stuff, uh, you know, most days. So I had to, I had to nominate her. Underrated performance in the movie. I thought her and her scene with Michael, that was like two lizard people squared off. Like, who was the more dangerous lizard person? And I mean, inevitably, we knew who it was if you saw the movie. But I thought she was very good too. And so, yeah, now yeah, there's always a snub. There's always a snub. And Javier Botet was, was one of the major snubs for best lizard person. I don't know if he would have won, though. Should he have received recognition for his lizard like role? Yes. But happens. It happens, chat. What'd you think? What'd you think of the first annual inaugural <laughs> Hermes? And a huge thank you, by the way. A huge thank you. I want to show it off in all of its beautiful glory, chat. Here, let me go ahead. Here it is. Huge thank you to Edgy Berserker for the Hermy Award. It looks beautiful, chat. Established 2024. So true. Nice little reference to Hellman's mayonnaise. A delicious, a delicious condiment, in my opinion. And it looks as if I have been put into golden carbonite and just petrified. <laughs> Best creepy doll. Ooh, that's a good, that's a good, that's a good idea. See, there, there, there's good categories, chap. Laugh my ass off. This is fun. Did you like the music? How is the music, guys? Was the music fun? Let me know if the music was good. Oh, you know what I should have done? I should have read the awards like Al Pacino. <laughs> I should have, I should have read them like, let me go back. Let me see the Hermes uh, for best picture. The Holdovers, Godzilla, one minus the Iron Claw. Are you there, God? It's me, Pacino. Talk to me. Dungeons and Dragons, honor among those thieves. Them Guardians of the Galaxies and the Volumes of Threes. That boy and that heron. Namona. And Spider-Man, the universe, uh, across, the, across the Spider-Man, yeah, <laughs> hoo <-ha. laughs> ah, my eyes see Godzilla, <laughs> I should have done it that way, I should have done it that way, <laughs> in hindsight, it's what I should have done, <laughs> oh, man, oh, God, no way, we, we don't want you to blow out your vocal, but you just does that naturally, no, it, ain't, it, ain't not, it ain't natural anything about what he's doing, <laughs> The boy in the hair and hoo ha! <laughs> oh Christ, so good. Oh, well, it's always, there's always next, always next year, always next year. Hindsight's twenty twenty, as we know. But uh, but no, guys, thank you so much for your support. Thank you again, to Edgy Berserker, for creating the award. Thank you uh, to Deadpool for paying for it, and uh, yeah, thank you for your feedback. Hope this was fun. You know, this was a little, this was, you know, a little laid back, you know, type of thing. Just, you know, just presenting kind of off the cuff, you know, going, going with the flow. But yeah, it was, it was enjoyable. It was, it was a good time. Hmm. And thank you for your votes. I decided, I decided just to be like, you know what? I'll vote in, in them too. And you guys are vote. It'll just do like one award. I thought instead of just doing the, the people's choice and then mine, I thought, well, let's all vote together. Whoever wins, wins, you know? I think it was pretty good. His vision ain't 20. No, <laughs> Al Pacino's vision is anything but 2020. Well, what, what am I looking at? <laughs> Good old Bobby Oppenheimer. Love him. Love him.